Um, it's very similar to like when you're adding and subtracting things with X's, you just add the real parts together and, um, and keep imaginary parts with the imaginary parts. Uh, multiplying, same thing. And I don't really use these rules. You're welcome to use these rules if you want. Uh, multiplying, same thing. You're going to go A times C, A times C, or sorry, A times C, A times DI, BI times C, and BI times DI. And then they have like a little shortcut there, but I'm not a big fan of shortcuts, so I'm going to ignore that part. So when we start off, um, I have 5 plus 2i. There is no number in front, and then we're doing addition. So I could actually drop the parentheses on the 5 plus 2i. Now on this part, it has addition. Because it has addition, I could also drop the parentheses right there. Now had that been a minus sign, just like when you're dealing with X's, you would distribute the minus. From there, um, we deal with the real parts. The real parts are five minus two, which is three. And then the imaginary parts, that's two I and three I, which is five I. And notice, complex form, you put the real part first, then the imaginary part, making what's called a complex number. Now your, your TI-83, this thing, actually could do imaginary. A lot of people don't realize it. Um, so if you happen to have one of these, I'll show you real fast. Get rid of all that. So I go 5 plus 2i, and then plus negative 2 plus 3. So this is really great on the ACT. And notice I got 3 plus 5i. Same thing. Now, the only thing I need to show you real fast is where is the i? It's the period, or I should say decimal. And yep, that's right there. So you have to hit second and then the period. And that's where the i is. Or the i is right there, right? Another i over there. All right, next, this problem is very similar. Um, there's no number out front. This is a subtraction problem, so I could drop the parentheses in front of negative six minus two i. Now, just like uh, with x's, we are going to distribute the negative in, basically a negative in front of an expression changes all the signs. That's going to change that to a negative 2 and that to a minus 4i. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 1 times 4i is negative 4i. And then I can combine stuff together. So my real part, negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. And then negative 2i minus 4i is minus 6i. Check my work in the calculator real fast, especially since I'm live. There we go, it's the same. All right, so we did an addition problem, that's called an operation. We did a subtraction problem, subtraction is an operation. Uh, we call that a specific symbol operator. And now we're gonna do what's called multiplication. How do I know this is multiplication? Because you have parentheses, an expression in parentheses times an expression in parentheses. Now your teachers from before me, may have taught you many different ways. Some people do what I call a tic-tac-toe method where you, you make like a tic-tac-toe box or a table, I guess you could call it. Some people just teach you to distribute. Some people say foil. 
Um, so I really don't know which way is the best to show you. So I'm just going to show the way that um, I tend to show kids. And the way I tend to show kids is you start with the two. You take it times the six, two times six, 12. And then you distribute the two to the four I. Two times four I is eight I. You move to the second part of the expression, which is three I, and you distribute that three I times six. That's 18 I. And then finally, here's another color. Well, I haven't used pink. There we go. And then I'll take 3i times 4i, and that's 12i squared. Okay, for some kids, and I'll show you real fast, this works better for them. This is how you can stay organized. So you put 2 plus 3i here. You put 6 plus 4i here. And then you, you could do the table to help you multiply. 6 times 2 is 12. See? 6 times 3i is 18i. See? Uh, 4 times 4i times 2 is 8i. And then 4i times 3i, 12i squared. So depending on how your teacher taught you, some teachers teach you to make a table to distribute. It doesn't matter to me, whichever way you like. Now from there, um, we need to know a very important property. And the property is, and I'm not sure if they put these in the notes, is that I squared equals negative one. If you take two I's and you multiply them, you get negative or negative one. So what that means is here, that is negative one. Okay. So let me rewrite this. I got 12. I see that eight I and 18 I's is what, 26? And then I just said that I squared is negative one, so that'd be plus 12 times negative one. From there, 12 times negative one, negative 12. And then I see that my 12s cancel. 12 minus 12 is zero. So those cancel and I just get 26i. So depending on your teacher, I'm okay with 26i, but there's some teachers, um, when you get to higher level math, they'll want you to write it like this. To represent it as a complex number, I personally think this is better. That's my own personal belief. So the answer is 26i. Let's see real fast. Check on my answer. 2 plus 3i times 6 plus 4i. 26i. So the reason why you could type I into a calculator is because um, I has a value. I is equal to square root of negative one. If I were to type X's in here, X's, we don't know the value of X and that's why your calculator cannot handle X's. But I does have a value. So, so far I have taught you how to simplify and write numbers as imaginary. I have taught you how to do operations on imaginary. 
operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication. Well, there's got to be one left over, right? Division. So let's go to division. And before we start, we need to define something that's called a complex conjugate. And what is a complex conjugate? It's when you have one that's a plus and one that's a minus. Okay, so it'd be like two plus three i, two minus three i. Six plus four i, six minus four i. Uh, one plus two i, one minus two i. Those are all what we call complex conjugates. And what, what's nice about complex conjugates is what they do, um, it's called rationalization. So dividing complex numbers is similar to rationalization process, rationalization process. Uh, we multiply and divide the fraction with the complex conjugate of the denominator. And so our goal here is to get the i out of the denominator. See the i? It's in the denominator called the bottom. We want that to go away. So how do you get that to go away? You will be multiplied by the complex conjugate. Three plus i, the complex, complex conjugate of three plus i is three minus i. So let me show you. So we'll start off with three minus i three plus i. And before I start, a common mistake I see is kids will cancel the threes and the i's. You can't do that because these are combined um, in subtraction. These are combined in addition. So the way you get rid of the i, um, you just close one. No. Um, you change one um, from plus. So if this is three plus i, you want to multiply by three minus i. Sorry, I'm having trouble speaking today. Now you can't just multiply one part of a fraction by three minus i, you'll change it. And so you have to multiply both denominator and numerator by three minus i. Now three minus i divided by three minus i is one. Okay, because if you have the same thing in numerator and denominator, it makes one. Five divided by five is one. Six divided by six is one. And now we're multiplying by one. When you multiply by one, it stays the same. So we didn't change anything. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see what do I get. So I'd get three minus i. times three minus i. And then in denominator, I get three plus i, three minus i. From there, I'm gonna distribute. So I'm gonna go three times three, nine, and then I'm going to go three times negative i, negative three i, and then I'm going to go and distribute the negative i, so negative i to the two times the three would be negative three i, and then negative i times negative i, Negative times negative is positive. I times I is I squared. I'll simplify here in a second. And then here, if I multiply, three times three is nine. Three, times negative i is negative 3i. And then I go i times 3, 3i. 
notice those I's are going to cancel. Why do they cancel? Because we multiplied by the complex conjugate. That's what's nice about the complex conjugate. And then I'm going to go I times negative I, positive times negative is negative. And then I times I is I squared. Oh boy, now let's see what happens. So if I'm starting here, I have nine. Oh, sorry. And then I have negative 3i and negative 3i makes negative 6i. And then I recognize that i squared is negative 1. Wish I could erase that. And then here I have 9. And then we have negative 3i plus 3i cancel. Your i should always cancel right there. If it doesn't cancel, you did not multiply by the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate makes it cancel for us. And then finally, well, this would be i squared is negative 1, so it would be minus negative 1, or 9 plus 1. Eh, I'm going to do it way down here. Because that just looks, doesn't make it look right. Uh, 9 plus 1 is 10. And then 9 minus 1 is 8. So I have 8 minus 6i over 10. Now, some teachers will take this. They're happy with this. But technically, it's not all the way correct because you're supposed to write this in complex form. And so what that would mean is you would need to break this up. Into the real part plus the imaginary part. So I'm saying that some teachers are happy here and probably me. I mean, I'm probably happy right there, but uh, technically you need to break this into the real part and the imaginary part. And then eight over 10, uh, that makes what, four fifths? And then six over 10 reduces to three fifths. And so I have four fifths minus three fifths I. These look hard, they really aren't. Okay. Um, I can't remember if the calculator is that smart to do that for us. Let me go check. And this is our last example in case you're worried about time. So I need to put that in parentheses. I really don't think the calculator could do this, but I can't remember. Whenever you type things in fractions, you should use parentheses. I'm going to be amazed if the calculator could do it. Ooh, not bad. Um, that's in decimal form. So on this calculator, if I go math, and then I just hit enter twice. Aha, so much easier. Look, same thing. Four fifths minus three fifths I. Okay, so if you have a graphing calculator, there you go. Um, I'm not sure if the Desmos calculator that you have access to does that. I'm pretty sure, and I could be wrong, that when you take the test, if you have a graphing calculator, you could probably use it. And I don't know if you ask for a graphing calculator, they might let you use it. I don't know how that works. But um, um, anyway, that's it is 8 o'clock. It was nice seeing you all. And I hope um, you have a, an imaginary day. All right, you can sign off.